Okay, let's say uh, we had a question like this. 5 to the power of 3, and I want to multiply that by 5 to the power of minus 2. And let's say I want to write that as a single exponent. I don't even really care what the answer is. I just want to write it as a single exponent. So this is multiplying. That would mean I would use the product rule here. And when I'm using the product rule, I add the exponents. So this would be 5 to the power of 3 plus the minus 2, which is 5 to the power of 3 minus 2, or 5 to the power of 1. So there's a fairly simple example. Let's look at another one. How about 6 to the power of 7 divided by 6 to the power of minus 2? We're just going to write this as a, as a power with a, with a single exponent. So putting these together, this is dividing. So now I'm using the quotient rule. So I'd have 6 to the power of 7 divided by 6 to the minus 2. So I'm going to subtract these exponents. And here's where you need to be really careful with your, with your signs. So this is 6 to the power of 7 minus minus 2. And of course, minus a minus 2 is like adding 2. And so as a single exponent, this one would be 6 to the power of 9. All right, let's, uh, let's crank it up here a bit. How about we did something, do something like this? So 7 to the power of 5 divided by 7 to the power of 2, all raised to the power of 3. Well, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the brackets first. So I'm going to do the work within in the brackets here. So this would be 7 to the power of 5 minus 2, because we're dividing. And when we divide, the quotient rule says we should subtract the exponents. So 7 to the power of 5 minus 2 is 7 to the power of 3. And now I'm going to use the power of a power rule, because I have a power raised to another power. And the rule here is I should multiply these together. So that's 7 to the power of 3 times 3 which is 7 to the power of 9. So as a single exponent, that one would be 7 to the power of 9. Well, let's say we have a question like this one. 2xy to the minus 4. Let's say I want to take that expression and I want to make sure I write exponents that are just positive. And it's standard in, in math to write terms with all the exponents positive. So I'm looking at the 2. Well, that's fine. That, that doesn't have an exponent on it. And the x has an ex... If there's no exponent there, it's really like an exponent of 1, which we typically don't write. So that's positive. I'm just going to leave that as x. But I come here to y to the power of negative 4. And remember, negative doesn't mean the y is negative. It means I need to take the reciprocal of that. So this would become 1 over y to the positive 4. And so really, I have 2 times x times 1, which is just 2x and the y will go down here in the denominator with a positive 4. So anything that has a negative, we're going to take the reciprocal of it and um, make the exponent positive. That's the negative exponent rule. And we can, we can make some real fun here. Let's do some like this. Oops, that's a 3. Let's go y to the minus 2. Let's do x. No, let's do a different variable for now. So let's say we got this one, and we want everything to be positive, all the exponents positive. Well, the coefficient negative 5 is still just negative 5. There's no negative exponent on here, so that's negative 5. The x cubed, well, that's positive, so I'm going to leave that there in the numerator. But I've got a y to the negative 2. So negative means I need to take the reciprocal. So that means that's going to now be in the denominator with a positive exponent. So y to the negative 2 became in the reciprocal, so move to the denominator, y to the positive 2. And I have an m to the minus 2 in the denominator. Well, taking the reciprocal of that is going to put it in the numerator with a positive exponent. And n to the 5 was positive, so it's going to stay in the denominator. 
So that's how we can take some complicated fractions and sim by simply replacing them either in the numerator or denominator, we can make the, the exponents all positive. We'll look at a couple last examples here. So in these last two examples, we need to make sure we have simplified this and we're going to make sure that all of the exponents in the end end up being positive. So here's one where we have more than one term in the bracket and everything in here needs to be squared. So I need to take the 3 and I need to square it. So 3 times 3, well that's 9. And now I have x to the minus 4 that needs to be squared. That's the power of a power rule. So the shortcut would be to multiply those together x to the power of minus 8. And whoops, we have a term with a negative exponent. So I need to take the reciprocal of x. That becomes 1 over x. So it's now in the denominator with a positive 8. So 9 divided by x to the power of 8. It's in this last one here, we've got, again, a bunch of two terms in a bracket that need to be raised to the minus 3. But in this case, I can combine these two together because the bases are the same. So I have 3 to the minus 1 times 3 to the minus 2. So I can use the product rule here and add the exponents. So this is going to be 3 to the minus 1 plus negative 2, which all needs to be raised to the power of negative 3. And negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. And now I have the power of a power rule again, which means I need to multiply them together. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So 3 to the power of 9. And there I've written my answer as a single exponent and the exponents are positive. And of course, if I wanted to find the actual answer, I could enter that in the calculator. It would be quite a large number. So as long as you remember the exponent laws, and there are things you need to, to remember and memorize, um, then it's simply a matter of breaking them down one step at a time until we get our final answer in simplest form.